Hey all you sub freaks and welcome back to Trionic 7. Yes, I'm back. Uh, so it's been a while since I made the last video, but you know, life has been uh, taking its toll. I have had a lot of work to do. It's been very fun. I've been at a conference in the US and I actually saw a few subs over there. So keep it up US, but you don't have as many subs as we do have back here in Sweden. So what's this video about then? Well, I'm currently out in my wife's 2006 Saab 95 Vector and take a look at the temp gauge, this one here. It's supposed to be horizontal, but the temp gauge never reaches full operating temperature. So this is a problem with the thermostat. So that's the main goal for today. I've brought a new thermostat with me today. Importantly, only get OEM Saab thermostats because the other off aftermarket ones are prone to failure as experience has shown in the Saab forms. So make sure you get original stuff for the thermostat. Also, I know the coolant hasn't been changed for a while. It has not been changed during our ownership of this car. And I've seen some, uh, what, what do you call it? Looks a bit dirty, the coolant. So I'm gonna try to make a coolant flush today as well. So coolant flush, temperature, oh sorry, thermostat change, and it's been a year since we bought the car, so it's probably time for a for an oil change as well. So the current mileage of this car is 203,676 kilometers. So it's been about 4,000 to 5,000 kilometers since we bought the car in September of 2015. That's about a year ago. Okay, so how do we know that the thermostat is bad? Well, first of all, the temp gauge, it never reaches horizontal position, but we also have open SID on this car. So I enabled it, and here we can see variable number four, TNG, which is temperature engine in Celsius, and it will tell you it's 66 degrees in the engine. And it doesn't get, get much warmer than this. The normal working thermostat is supposed to keep the engine at around 89 degrees. So already here we're more than 20 degrees off the mark. And the set point is 89, but it should vary between roughly 80 and 100 degrees Celsius as the thermostat controls the engine temperature. So if you didn't know, the thermostat is actually a mechanical controlling device. So we have a mechanical control equipment and it opens and closes this spring here and lets coolant out to be cooled by the radiator. And if this doesn't work, it's made to fail safe. That is, it ma it's made to fail open. So it cools more than if it were the other way around, it will cool less, which will cause overheating and severe engine damage. So a cool engine is not a catastrophic failure, but it's not a good idea to run with this for an extended period of time. The engine wants to warm up, so it uses the start up map all the time instead of using the normal uh, running map at operating temperature and it can also call, cause excessive wear to the engine. So changing the thermostat is a very good idea and this is also a very common problem with the house. I actually solved this on my own, the red 95 error you all know about, uh, way back before I got the YouTube channel. Oh and before I forget, I must apologize for what's possibly going to be bad audio in this video because my microphone is broken again. It's the second time it breaks, hopefully I'll get a new one and a better one on warranty, but for this video expect some worse audio than usual. Here's the beauty. And we're now out in a place called the P7, out in Råslett in Jönköping of Sweden. Really nice place, I can give I can really give a recommendation for this place. It's a volunteer driven garage. So you can come here for most days of the week. There's almost anything you need. Um, jack stands and lifting devices and a ramp and tools and you can change the oil, you can wash your car. Can really recommend this place. Here the car is lifted up. Remember kids, always lift safely. I put the car on two jack stands. I have a block of wood behind the rear wheel so it doesn't slip. This is just for your own safety. Fashion, power, activate. I really enjoy working inside on a cold day like this. So I really enjoy having access to this garage. So I'm using a creeper. You don't want to know what a creeper is called in Swedish, by the way. And I removed the front lower engine cover out of plastic. And to remove this, I used uh, an eight millimeter socket. There's first four bolts in the front. And then I think it was a T20 Torx bit. I removed four more bolts in the rear. 
and you just have to wiggle the co cover out to get out. And this is to get access to the coolant drain plug. So I'm going to do a coolant flush while I'm at it. You can change the thermostat without this step, but I know that the coolant is dirty in this car. So the coolant plug is a bit of a pain here. It's located well in the middle of everything. I'll try to draw an arrow here in the video to this green little plug, just to show you where I'm looking at. It's behind the, or in front of the battery. If I break the little plastic thread on it, I will still be able to use the car, but I don't have a spare, so I'll be really careful. Then I'll use a flat head plier and pull it a quarter of a turn counterclockwise and pulling it out. Uh, my mechanic told me to pull out slightly as I'm turning to help the threads go. I also put a bit of uh, WD-40 on it and let it soak for a while just to make everything go smoothly. So I have a drain pan underneath, it will catch the coolant coming straight down from the well. And now it's a possible danger time here. The engine is slightly warm, remember if the engine is warm or hot this might be dangerous. I'm opening up the radiator cap slowly. It will release pressure, so be careful. Very gently. And there you could hear the pressure come out. Alright, that's what I call success. I was worried for that drain plug, but I was able to get it out real smoothly and didn't break it. So now the car is leaking out coolant. And don't worry about the color down in the drain. I used an old oil catch can which had a bit of oil in the bottom. Now the thermostat is located here. I'll put an arrow in post. I have a camera in one hand and light in the other. But to make everything more accessible, I will remove the battery. I will remove the charge pipe and the plastic cover here that says turbo. Okay, so battery is removed by using a 10 millimeter to remove the, the terminals. Then a 13 millimeter. Sorry, it's a bit noisy in there. And then the charge pipe is removed by a 7 millimeter, 7 millimeter hex socket. Though this car seems to have a lot more cables than my red arrow, so I don't seem to get it off without cutting stuff. Uh, now the thermostat is behind here. And you can see the see the hose coming from here from the radiator down into the thermostat housing. And we're gonna remove the cable clamp by using a remote controlled clamp tool. I'll show you how this works. And then you use 10 and 13 millimeter sockets to get the bolts out in here. Now this was easier than my other car again. A uh, lot more hoses and wires and things going around here than I, I'm used to, so it wasn't as easy as I planned it to be. Alright, so here's the thermostat housing and the thermostat is inside. It was a bit tricky to get to, but there's one, two bolts that are 13 millimeter and one, two bolts that are 10 millimeters. There's also ground wire coming into, I think, this one. Uh, I apparently removed one bolt too much. I think that was for the intake manifold. So be sure you get these two 30 millimeter bolts. This lower one was a bit tricky to find. And since it's so cramped, you have to go by feel. You can't really see them. So to re replace the thermostat, we just pull the old one out. There we go. So now we make sure that the thermostat housing is clean and that the gasket surfaces are as they should be. Okay, time for the new thermostat. Again, I'm using a Saab OEM thermostat, and the part number is here. This is the thermostat. Now, there's one thing I want to point out, and that's this little uh, bronze-looking, it's, it's a wee pole, and this is to make the system let go of the air. The Saab is nice because it automatically bleeds the cooling system through this hole, but this hole needs to be on the top side. So as soon as I figure that out, I can put it back in. Also, I use some uh, Vaseline spray. It needs to be acid-free so it doesn't attack the rubber in the gasket. And we're gonna spray the gasket down, put it back in, in the right orientation, and then put it back to the car. Okay, so now I'm putting the housing back in. Uh, the thermostat needs to be put into the engine block, and then we put the housing over it. Again, remember to make sure the bleeder hole is upwards, and then I'm starting to put the bolts back in. Now, there's one thing I want to point out, and that's if you remember the uh, ground strap or the grounding point. This one went to one of the 10 millimeter points. Uh, I'm gonna use a bit of emery cloth and just sand slightly on the thermostat housing before putting it back on and then spray it lightly with some Vaseline. 
just to make it conduct better. Experience has shown that this grounding point is very important for engine performance and if you get odd problems like knocks and strange behavior, check the grounding point. It can be a big source of headaches. Okay, nothing much to report new here, just put the bolts back in. 22 Nm is a torque, so just hand tight. Now it's time to put the radiator hose back on and uh, fill the coolant system up with water. This is an awesome tool to have. It's a remote controlled hose clamp tool. So I can reach down into the thermostat housing and I was able to get this hose clamp on. It's a really, really tough hose clamp and I actually had a hard time getting it back on. But now it's there, the radiator hose is back on, all the bolts are clamped down. I'll close the drain cock and then fill it up with uh, normal water, let it run for a few minutes and then empty it out again and then fill it up with the coolant. Right, so the battery cover is, is back on. I put the charge pipe back on and I filled up the coolant system with about seven liters of uh, just standard tap water. We're gonna run the car, we're gonna put an, an exhaust pipe so it uh, sucks the exhaust gas out of this uh, place. You don't get carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide poisoning. I run it until it gets warm and then I'm gonna drain the coolant again and fill up with, uh, with the antifreeze. Sorry about the noise, there's a few people working here now. All right, the car is running. We're monitoring the coolant level so we see it doesn't run out of water. And if necessarily, we'll add some more. Now, as soon as the engine hits operating temperature, the thermostat will open and it will suck out engine through the radiator. So we need to put in more coolant when this happens. I also turned on OpenSID. Uh, don't worry, I'll make a video about OpenSID soon, how to interpret the numbers. But if you look on the lower end, it says TNG, T-E-N-G, 48. That is 48, or now 49 degrees Celsius. So the engine is heating up. And we want to hit about uh, 90 or 100 degrees, so it opens the thermostat. You can also see the temp gauge to the right. Starting to rise now. You also want to turn the AC off and put maximum heat so it circulates the heater core so it, the coolant needs to reach all the places to flush out all the old coolant and dirt currently at 69 degrees we're reaching uh, operating temperature in a few minutes okay we are at temperature the cooling fan is running Coolant is still high and didn't need to fill it up. And in here we're at 85 degrees currently. It's been going up and down as the thermostat controls the temperature. But we're now at 80 and not at 50 or 60 degrees. So that's a very big difference from before. This means the new thermostat is working and there's no leak. So it's everything is as it should. Now I'm going to drain the coolant once again and fill it up with the real coolant antifreeze mix. The water has been drained and I'm now going to fill up with, with fill up with antifreeze. And when you filled up the car with coolant, just put that plastic lower engine cover back on and you should be back in business. I also took the time to do an oil change and change the oil filter. It's been a year since we purchased the car and it's time for a new oil. So we are done and we can look on the temp gauge here. I've taken a test drive. And you can see that the temperature is where it should be, horizontal camp temp gauge. And if we enable open SID, we have 84 degrees currently. So the temperature will be somewhere around 80 to 100 degrees Celsius when driving normally. Another thing you might do after the test drive is take a coolant tester. This is good for the winter. And you put it into the coolant reservoir and you pump it a few times, which will fill it up. Keep it horizontal and then you read off the temperature currently it says uh, minus 22 degrees celsius so it might be a little too low on coolant or the antifreeze in the coolant i might have to look into it and add some more antifreeze so i was slightly stressed out when making the video i had to come back home and get some other stuff done so i didn't have a, the time to explain everything thoroughly but some reflections now that I'm done with it. First of all, it took quite a long time to drain the coolant. When you opened up this little drain plug, 
it really seeped out slowly. It took maybe 10-15 minutes just to empty the coolant. And that's quite a long time when you're just standing there waiting for it to happen. Also it took quite a while to get the engine warm when idling. So that also took a bit of time. In total I was in the garage for 4 hours. But remember it also took time to film so you guys can see the progress. It was also not very easy to opening that coolant drain plug, the green one. But if you peek from underneath and slightly forward, uh, you will see what I mean when you're, when you're underneath the engine. And then take your other arm. I took my left arm and put it around the subframe with the pliers and then you should be able to get a good grip on that plug. Then again, rotate counterclockwise quarter of a turn and pull it carefully outwards. You don't want to break it. It is a very good idea, as I said, to bring a spare I didn't though, and I should have brought one, but luckily I was uh, able to get it open. Another thing I noticed was that the old thermostat didn't really look like the thermostat I put in. So someone must have changed the thermostat before in this car and didn't use a Saab original thermostat. It was a slightly different color on that bleeder hole. So that's why it failed. Remember, experience has shown us that the aftermarket thermostats don't work. So only use Saab original thermostats. You might also wonder if you're used to an older car, how I bled the cooling system. And the answer is you don't need to. The bleeder hole in the thermostat takes care of it automatically. So you just fill the coolant, drive around for a while, make sure that the coolant level is where it's supposed to be. Maybe refill if necessary, but that's it. It takes care of itself. But okay, that's enough talking from me. It's been a long video already. Thank you very much for watching this Trionic 7 video on flushing and replacing the coolant and replacing the thermostat in this Saab 9.5. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to follow us on social media, we're on Facebook, Google+, Reddit, Twitter and Instagram. And you can of course also subscribe to us here on YouTube so you don't miss any future videos. It is nice to be back. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next Saab video. Bye bye.